Welcome, welcome, welcome. Now today I have a very interesting topic for you, a very hot topic. And it's the topic of infinite banking. Uh, recently I've been getting some questions about it and I just figured, I just thought I would just make a video about it and hopefully it answers a lot of questions and give people a better understanding about what this product is about. Uh, now, if you're not familiar with infinite banking, it's basically where you actually use the cash value in your permanent life insurance policy and you use it as leverage to borrow against uh, to get personal or business funding. So that's basically what it is. You know, you're, you're borrowing against your cash value in your policy and then you're, you're, you're actually going to go out and get personal funding or business funding and do whatever you need to do with that. So, so that's the concept of infinite banking. You can just use your own policy as the bank as opposed to going to a bank for it, all right? So um, there's two ways to do this. There's two ways to do it. And the, the, the first way is to do a whole life policy, a regular whole life, or you can do an index universal life. I prefer the index universal life because I think that the upside on that is just way better. Um, but that's my opinion. You can do your own research and decide which one is best for you. Now, the crazy thing about this is that I didn't realize, I didn't know how to do this strategy like a year ago. Uh, and that's because I was an agent for other insurance companies that didn't either didn't have this product or didn't discuss this product. So there's many agents that still don't know about this product. Um, I've always known that you can borrow from your permanent policy, but this particular strategy was not something that was covered. So uh, that's what tra transitioned me to becoming a broker where now I have access to all different type of carriers, which are companies, um, where I can give my clients what they want, whether it's a budget thing or, or an investment thing, whatever they want, I can provide for them as opposed to just uh, giving them what the company offers. So, so yeah, so that's what transitioned me to, 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 um, to being a broker. So, infinite banking, how does it work? Again, there's two ways to do this. You could do this with a whole life policy or an index universal life policy. Now, what is an index universal life policy? As I mentioned, this is what I prefer to use. So, uh, this is what we're going to be discussing today. So, what is it? It's first of all, it's a universal policy because it's an all-in-one policy, all right? It's universal, so you get everything in one. You get some temporary insurance in there, term insurance, or you get some whole life insurance in there. Plus, it's very flexible. You could, you could change your, your uh, death benefit on a year-to-year -year basis. You can change your, your, your premium on a year-to-year -year basis. Uh, you could do a lot of things. You know, you, you have really good control on what your policy do and make it work for you. And you get to choose those options on a year-to-year -year basis. So it's it's a very flexible um, uh, policy and it's all in one. So that's why it's universal. It's an index um, policy because it is tied to an index fund like the S&P 500, like the NASDAQ 100, some sort of um, index fund it's tied to now it's tied to it but it's not invested in it so it's tied to it but it's not invested in it so there's a difference so let me explain how that works so the insurance company do um, invest in the market they're, they're just they they work just like a bank they were the first bank in fact right they were around before bank and they do some of the same things that a bank does which is you put your premium, you give your premium, and they, they invest. They invest into the market, of course, responsibly. They invest. They know what they're doing. So what they would allow you to do in an index universal policy is you're not invested in the stock market, but they will share gains with you. They would allow you to share that. So it's tied to, the, uh, to, to an index. So let me show you how that works. So there's, there's two things that they have. They have what's called a cap or ceiling. Your cap or ceiling is within your contract. That's the maximum percentage you would get if the uh, index performs well. So for example, let's say a particular year, let's say 
2018, it performed, it did 25%, the particular index that they use. Let's use the S&P 500 as an example. Let's say it performed at 25%, but within your contract, there's a cap, there's a ceiling, there's the most you can earn. Because remember, you're not invested in it, but you're participating, you're getting some of it. So let's say that amount is 13%. So, if it gained 25%, you're getting 13%. If it gained 12%, you're getting 12%. If it gained 8%, you're getting 8%. If it gained 22%, you're getting 13%. So, follow how that works? There's a max that you can get. So, if it performs over the max, you're going to get the max. All right? You're not going to get the full thing. You're going to get the max. And if it performed under the max, you'll get that. Now, what if it underperformed, it, it crashed, it drops, lost money? The good thing is that you actually don't take any of that risk. You have what's called a floor. So in your policy, there's going to be a floor. Now, the worst case scenario is for a floor is zero. That means the worst case scenario is you get nothing. All right? So if it's... If it goes to minus 10%, you get nothing. Now, in some contracts, the floor might be 1%. The floor might be 0.7%. The floor might be 2%. Whatever your contract says. But worst case scenario is zero. You don't get any anything. That's okay, right? You know, you, you participate when it goes up. And when it goes down, you don't lose anything. Win, <clears throat> right? So that's how it works. You have a floor and a ceiling. So that's how an index fund works. Now, <clears throat> what you're trying to do in a product like this is max fund because when you fund it, some money goes to the death benefit. If you're using this strategy, what you want to do is make sure that less money goes here and the most of the money goes towards building your cash value. That goes into your savings account, your account where the money grows, right? So cash value. Your goal is to fund the policy as quick as possible with as much money as possible to build up your cash value so therefore you can use this strategy and take money out of it. The more money you put into it earlier is the faster your cash value is built up. And what is your cash value? Your cash value is basically your value of that policy. If you were to, if you were to decide that you wanted to stop paying that policy and you want to surrender the policy, I've been paying on this policy for 15 years, uh, I'm done. I don't, I don't need it. I'm good. I just want the money. You can, whatever the value of the, that policy is, you can take it, all right? So that's based on the money that you put in and the compounding interest that's added and the growth. So that's what makes up your cash value. So, so that's what it is. You want to put in as much as possible in the policy to build your cash value as fast as possible. All right. So, so that's how that works. And on the debt benefit side, it's an annual renewable term that's covering that so it's less money to do that term insurance costs less in your earlier years but as you grow older your cost of insurance is going to go up higher so you want to fund it as much as possible so that could take care of those costs for later right so that's how it works so the less the less amount of money goes out to taking care of the death benefit on the annual renewable term side and then the excess of the money goes on to the building, the cash value. Hope that makes sense to you guys. So let's talk about some pros and cons of this particular policy. Okay, so pros. High return potential. You have a potential of making a lot of money. Growing a lot, right? So high return potential. Uh, what else? Your your capital gains, your gains in there. Capital gains is tax free. I said tax free. I didn't say tax deferred. I said tax 
free, no tax, all right? So this is one of the few um, uh, products you can use to actually don't pay tax. So the lawmakers will tell you, go put your money in a 401k and all those other products where it's tax deferred. But when it's time to pull it out, Uncle Sam wants his money. So you're gonna have to pay tax. So they'll tell you to go put your money in this so you can pay tax later. However, they themselves is putting their money here. In, in, in products like this, like this in trust and stuff like that. So capital gains are tax-free. What else? It provides flexibility. Flexible premium, flexible death benefit, flexible percentage of, you know, you can adjust your contract. You can say, okay, I want this year my floor to be 0% and my cap to be 12 uh, I'll take the other option of 2% and, and, and uh, 10, whatever it is. So you have lots of flexibility. You can actually, on a year-to-year -year basis, um, change your policy to fit your particular needs. Maybe, maybe your goals change and you want to do something else. You can do that year-to-year. -year. So it provides flexibility. You can borrow against it over and over again. Okay, so when you borrow the money, right, um, you borrow it and you pay interest on it. And when you pay it back, you can go borrow again and again, right? So you might hear people saying, hey, when I borrow my money from an infinite banking policy, my money doesn't, you know, nothing happens to my money. My, my hundred, let's say I borrow a hundred thousand. My 100000 is still growing interest as if I didn't touch it. Now, you might be saying, that's too good to be true. How is it that I can borrow 100000 and my 100000 still there making me money? That's too good. That, I, don't, I don't understand that. Let me explain to you. You're actually not borrowing your money. You're borrowing the insurance company's money, right? You're using your cash value as leverage. So you're using your cash value as collateral. It's basically a secured loan. So your 100,000 cap is still there because you didn't touch it. You actually are borrowing against it. You're not borrowing it itself, okay? Hope that makes sense to you guys. So uh, for example, let's say you're, you, you, you chose the option to, um, there's two type of loans. You can do a wash loan and say, okay, I'm borrowing it at 5%. Uh, and then I'm going to I'm going to gain five percent, so it's a wash. Or you can do a participating loan with, or an index loan, where you um, could um, uh, let's say you're borrowing it at five percent, but that year the growth for the index was fifteen percent, but your cap is ten percent, so you gain ten percent on your money, and your payback for the loan is five percent. So you, that hundred thousand, you gain a ten thousand on it, but you only have to pay back five thousand for the loan. I mean, I, I don't know what uh, what other product does that, but there you go. So that's that's a great great benefit. You know, your money is gonna still grow even though you're borrowing against it. All right. So so that's that. Then you have no loss. That's a benefit. You're not gonna lose anything, right? So if, if, the, if the index crash, you still don't lose anything because your floor is 0%, right? What else? Your transfer is tax-free. So what is transfer? Transfer is when you die and the policy or the benefit to the policy, the death benefit is now transferred to your beneficiary, all right? So that's what it is. Uh, there's four phases in a product like this. There's the contribution phase, um, there's the accumulation phase, which is the growth, uh, there's the distribution phase where you start taking money out of it, and then there's a the transfer. So a transfer, it's tax-free, unlike an annuity which is tax-deferred and an IRA and some of those other products, 401k. This is tax-free. Not tax deferred, no tax, okay? So that's a great benefit. What else? Let's talk about some cons. 
obviously there's going to be some cons, right? All right, so the first thing is there's no guarantee. No guarantee. Unlike a whole life policy, a regular whole life policy where there's a guarantee, whether it's 4%, 5%, whatever, there's a guarantee that you're going to make this percentage each year. That's a safe way to go, very safe way to go. Um, so you're not going to lose anything, but it's all guaranteed. But, you know, with interest rates low now, a lot of them are doing 2 to 4% as opposed to 4 to 6%. So... Uh, that's why I like an IOL better, but there's no guarantee in an IOL because could the the stock market crash 10 years in a row? That's a possibility. Never happened before, but it's a possibility. So that's why you cannot guarantee anything here because you um, it's a possibility that you can make nothing year after year after year. So no guarantee. Uh, what else? There's a cap. Here's a cap on your earning, or your, or your growth, I should say. But there's a cap, no big deal, there's a cap. So as I mentioned, the floor and the cap or the ceiling, um, if, if the, the index grows 25% and your cap is 15%, 15% is what you get. So there's, there's always gonna be a cap, a maximum amount that you can, you can get, regardless of how it does. So again, if it falls, below that cap, then you get that percentage. If it falls above the cap, you're getting the cap. So there's a cap right there. Uh, what other? You can lapse. Your policy can lapse because um, the, as I, as I mentioned before, it's annual renewable term to cover the death benefit. So as you grow older, your, the cost of insurance is gonna be a lot more it's going to be a lot more expensive. Older people pay a lot more for coverage, right? So if not funded correctly, there might not be enough cash value to keep that policy going. So if you're using an internet banking strategy, though, that should never be an issue for you because your whole goal is to fund that policy as much as possible, heavily. So it builds up a lot of cash value so you would never have to worry about this, okay? Hope that makes sense. I hope the information was viable to you guys. Um, I hope it, uh, it clears up a lot of questions about infinite banking. If you do have a questions, please feel free to leave a comment in the comments below and I'll definitely answer it for you. Also, if you'd like to see how this would look for you, if, if you wanted to get something like this and you want an, a quote and an illustration of how it would look when you, when you put in a certain amount of premium, you can actually go to my Instagram or my Facebook and book a call with me and I will set that up for you. I'm gonna leave that link uh, below uh, so you can do that. Go to my Instagram page or my Facebook to do that. Also, if you haven't already done so, make sure that you're subscribing to the channel so I can get this information out to you and like and share with your friends so they can get the information and hit the notification bell so every time I drop a video, you're notified immediately. Uh, until next time, have a fantastic day.